so originally um, I open a gym and no one's here. <laughs> so um, uh, he's doing some rugby and it makes sense that uh, he's doing a bit of training. So we do some basic kettlebell work and press ups and pull ups and I think whatever he was, he was like 11 or 12 at the time. Um, and no lifting as such. And then as soon as I opened here, um, we went from a case where he would just pop down and like once a week or so just do something, but it wasn't weightlifting specific then. Um, he started weightlifting, I feel probably sort of just halfway through being 12 years old. And we were doing some squats and some deadlifts and a little bit of like high intensity interval stuff. So, you know, to ally with his rugby. Um, and then it gradually fell into weightlifting. I remember taking him to, um, it was a British under 18s in, uh, the empire. And, um, we went down there. I said, do you want to come and watch some weightlifting? I'm going to watch the British championships under 18s on Saturday. And he went, uh, mm, right. <laughs> just mm, whatever. Uh, so we drove down um, and uh, that was our first viewing of weightlifting and Rebecca Tyler was there. She was like whatever, same age as him, like 13 or so. Nam Amadi was there lifting. It was one of his clean and jerk conferences where he had 100 kilos. It was, it, was, it was great, but we totally naive. You know, we thought, oh, we'll fucking turn up at nine, be done by 11. <laughs> Like, and of course, nine o'clock comes along, nothing started. Ten o'clock comes along, um, and it's just the first session. And then eleven o'clock, when we're thinking we're going to fuck off, like, no, like it's just this thing's going to go on all day. So we we didn't last long. We just like fucking gone. Um, we're in and out. But uh, it was, I think, you know, if that moment was like, I'll give it a go, and not through anything that was um, predetermined. It just like, okay, I'll give it a go. Um, and as a young weightlifting coach, I was eager to have somebody to coach, you know, yeah. and, uh, that was, that was the start of it. So we, we sort of naturally fell into the coach athlete and he made his own decisions, I suppose, even at that stage, you know, when you're here, you're training, when you're not here, you're not training. Simple as that really. So, um, the initial year, and this is like, you know, it seems like a fucking distant memory, but it was only six years ago, I suppose. Um, the initial aspect of that was him coming in, training, you know, very much a, what the fuck is this? What the fuck is that? You know, fucking pull your socks up, fucking get on with it, fucking type deal. Um, and uh, he stuck it out, which is great because, you know, if you're going to, I know he's my blood, but you, you could just say, fuck off. I'm not, <laughs> that's not for me, but he didn't. Um, and I think, interestingly, immediately it had a, a, a carryover into his sport and his sport was rugby. And he, he was a bit of a plodder, you know, not naturally sort of a, talented in that sense where he was fucking dynamic and fast and had great hands. Um, all of a sudden, though, he was seemed to be making more tackles. He seemed to be more explosive. And over, like, between 13 and 14, like, people started noticing, noticing a, a, quite a substantial difference in his output for rugby. And it just so happened that um, as a weightlifter, he was becoming more qualified. You know, first competition was Welsh schools, gold medal on the last lift by a kilo. Fucking great. Six for six second competition, British schools, uh, like bearing in mind, you could fucking roll up, take your fucking, uh, anybody could win. I'm not saying it was outstanding lifting by there, but it, it showed that he had the temperament for competition, um, that he was getting rewarded for training early on, which is important, I feel. Um, plus the real reason he was doing weightlifting was for his rugby. So he was becoming much more of a first team pick if for want of a better word, as a result of um, the increase in speed and power that he was having. If that answers your yeah, question. That answers, that answers perfectly. Um, yeah. So at what point um, did you start, did it start to transition from being a secondary training aid into a 
this is weightlifting, we could go to the Games, we could go to the Olympics, etc. Um, the, the, the real moment it changed for, in, in my opinion, for, for Jordan was when he won his cap for Wales rugby. And there was, that was an interesting 12 months. If I go back um, sort of 10 months before that, he was in Austria. He had his first international um, in Austria for Wales, and that was at the old Fulda Cup, whatever the fuck it's called now. But, um, and he represented Wales in that and won a gold and had the, the national anthem play. So he's standing there with the Welsh national anthem playing and like that moment was just very powerful. That was a fucking, that was a really powerful moment that, you know, he's traveled to a different country, he's done weightlifting and the flag goes up and the anthem is played, albeit, and what I really like about that competition is that they respect the nationality, you know, they respect your nation. Um, and for Jordan, I feel that was a, re a very strong moment. Um, but there was still the conflict between rugby and weightlifting. It was it was not guaranteed. It was like, OK, I'm getting pretty good at this weightlifting thing, but I'm playing for Cardiff Blues and I'm, you know, I'm also enjoying this um, improvement in my rugby. And now there may be an opportunity to play for Wales as a rugby player, which happened, you know, 10 months later in the sort of March, April of whatever it was, 2015. I believe, um, he then ended up uh, getting a cap at 16, which, like, it's fucking rugby, isn't it? You know, and they sell rugby brilliantly, you know. This, they do a good job of making you um, want to play for Wales. And, um, like, weightlifting doesn't really have a, <laughs> a comparative um, offer when it comes to, you know, professional contracts, money, structure, you know, the fucking heritage of rugby in Wales. Um, so for him to win his cap and then have all of the um, interest from under 18s, Wales level, you know, Cardiff Blues level, um, there needed to be something very large on the horizon that was happening. And that was the um, Youth Commonwealth Games in Samoa. And that was a that was a big deal because he'd done his rugby. He ticked that box as an athlete. Um, he got his Welsh cap, and then all focus was towards winning the Commonwealth Youth Games in Samoa. Um, and so we were able to have, for the first time, probably a no rugby interfering training period. Um, and. What he realised, I think, because he didn't win that competition, he came second. Um, what he realised, <laughs> what he realised was that um, having having um, achieved a non-gold, um, that he could have won that competition if he'd have dedicated himself to the sport. And so I think if you're a if you're an athlete who has the conviction to be the best then a silver is not a gold. And um, you compromise your success because you're splitting yourself into two pieces. Um, and so the decision he needed to make was, well, am I going to be the fucking best rugby player on the planet or am I going to be the best fucking weightlifter on the planet? Um, and through that moment, he had to choose this... Um, incredibly difficult decision between moving away from the culture of rugby and into this fucking non-existent culture of weightlifting um, and believing that he was going to be the best weightlifter on the fucking planet. So that's a, that was an important moment for him to do. And of course, like, the, here I am as his uncle and his weightlifting coach, um, thinking to myself, well, I, of course I would love you to remain in weightlifting, but I'm not going to fucking say a word pal, you're going to fucking do this yourself. You're going to make this decision based on what you want as a human being. And under no circumstances are you going to feel a, a, a single minute of pressure from me. I'll be realistic with you if you ask my opinion. I don't think he did ask my opinion, to be honest with you. I think he just went and made that decision himself. Um, and 
like the for for somebody to move away from something into something it must be what they want um it cannot be because i've influenced it or anybody has influenced it otherwise there is a non-genuine reason to come in and train and be a fucking athlete every day of your life um so it must be the want of that individual um and because he chose that decision because he made uh his mind up to become a weightlifter it's made everything else much more straightforward in terms of commitment, in terms of understanding, in terms of intent. Um, not necessarily to be the best because that should be there. Why the fuck would you ever do the sport if you didn't want to be the fucking best in the sport? Um, what it's given him is this is my journey. This isn't me and me uncle. This is mine. Um, and he takes full possession and responsibility of his training as a result of that, because I think that decision um, to not be a rugby player and be a weightlifter was the most um, the most important one because he chose it. Uh, and that was um, so that was coming into the twenty sixteen season. Yeah, two thousand fifteen. Yeah. So then yeah. coming to the twenty sixteen season. Yeah. Um, Still a 94 kilo lifter, and that yeah, that was the, the last year as a youth, is that right? Yes, um, that was his under 16, under 17, whatever yeah. year, wasn't it? So, um, so that whole year was spent only doing weightlifting, yeah. So, from uh, let's have a look from when he did when he played for Wales was uh, March, April 2015, the Samoa Games was um. September 2015 uh, and then of course we have like he's 16 at that point um, he's born in 99 so he's 16 come the game so he's, he's under a youth at that stage and going into 2016 was his final youth year um, and you may well remember the, the the 160 clean and jerk he made as a 16 year old in the Welsh Open to win by a kilo um, and like that really was a lift I don't feel anybody was expecting him to make except me and except him. Um, and we went into that competition uh, as, as we always do, like confident that we're going to beat everybody because that's important. Um, but not knowing um, what it's going to take to win you know some days it'll like back in those days 275 was quite a number wasn't it It was quite a, quite a deal to be hitting you know 50 20 you know th those sort of numbers were sort of it is sort of threshold i suppose um and we had w once he'd made the decision to be a weightlifter then we started to create a more structured okay we can be here by this stage we can be here by this stage and look at the development in a very different sense that um we are looking to become the best so we must be looking at um all aspects of training not just uh you know what we do in per session what we do outside of the sessions how we handle ourselves um for exams and of course like bearing in mind that it's he's to whatever it is whatever they do in school these days a levels or whatever um he had to manage his education as well as you know satisfy his parents that he's not just fucking wanking himself off every day he's actually getting his education sorting out and, and all the rest of it so there was a mo there were moments um transitioning whereby we were looking at um you know the technical side of lifting looking at expressing different percentage zones that perhaps we haven't had the opportunity to work in because we had to stop for rugby start for weightlifting type deal um and you know notwithstanding um initially in weightlifting uh if you if you're not a weightlifter or you haven't been a weightlifter as a as a coach um weightlifting is not the most forthcoming um let's give you a hand sport I think uh, weightlifting likes you to work it all out first um, and then, you know, once you can do it, then people might offer the assistance or have a conversation with you. It's not, or it wasn't back then anyway, um, wasn't the, the most sort of forthcoming in terms of uh, you show me where the fucking book is to bring up a... 12 to fucking 17, 18 year old young man into 69 to 105 category. There isn't a book in Britain 
written by fucking somebody British. You know, Cyril does a great job up uh, north, but fucking Cyril was out of the mix and you'd have to fucking speak to Cyril independent. Do you know what I mean? So actually having a structure of development is quite a challenge. You have to um, watch, observe, be on your fucking guard with stuff and make sure that you are really, um, that you understand your lifter as they're going through dramatic changes. Like they're going from uh, 85 kilo weight class to 94 kilo weight class. Well, fuck, that's a, you know, he would put fucking 10 kilos on in like no time. Um, so uh, like that's a challenge. That's a challenge for him to put the weight on. It's a challenge for your coach to um, assess what the fuck's going on and like where your capacities lie. I'm not a big, um, you know, you know, f fuck them with maximum person, uh, you know, there are times for maximum lifting, uh, but also there are times when you need to be really um, looking at your percentages and the quality of the work you're doing. And so um, coming into his youth year, that was an important year for me because I was like, fuck, this is like, this is the last time he gets to express himself in this category. Um, and Little did I know they were changing the, you know, they would go 15, 17, 20 now, isn't it? They don't have 15, 16, 17, 18, 20. Um, so they changed a lot of the records thing to be in line with Europe and world thing. I can understand that. Um, so it became a really big year. And um, lo and behold, come fucking, um, it was just after the uh, Welsh seniors so that would be march come march we pick up a fucking wrist injury you know and uh that was a that was a very serious moment because he'd never had an injury before you know never had a f not a peep you know part of i feel his success is the fact that we've managed all of that stuff you know uh really well he's had a few we had a broken leg playing rugby, but, you know, what can I do about that? But this was an actual acute injury from weightlifting. And I was, you know, that was a moment where I looked at um, myself and what I was selecting for him. Um, and it was also a moment where I learnt a valuable lesson on when I see this, that means he's fucked. So there's no big lifting when I see this. Do you get me? You, you need to understand what his fatigue levels are. Um, and... Of course, when you've got a body that's growing and developing, its fatigue levels change um, every single month, three months. They're, they're different. They're not the same because the body's developing so rapidly. Um, and of course, he's the kind of individual who can put weights up pretty straightforward, you know. Um, and it was, it was a very... Um, it was a very good learning process for us, even though you learn the most at the time, you don't want to be learning the most. I don't want him injured, you know, under no, I don't want anybody injured. Um, and yet I feel that it was, it was almost a, if it was going to happen, let it happen then and let us fucking learn the most that we can from something that we don't want. Um, and that uh, experience of, having an injury and him not being able to snatch nor clean. So we did loads of pulls and loads of squats. We did lots of things that maybe in hindsight, um, we could have done ways back in his earlier development, um, which we didn't do potentially. And, and again, I think like that, him being my first athlete, um, that was probably a sign of all the things that I should have been doing, but probably didn't do, if that makes sense.